that, Charlotte? Huh. We're always running into her. Let's... I see. So you believe that this warning letter was sent by the Phantom Weasel? Absolutely. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Phantom Weasel never acts as you expect. He must have faked his own death ten years ago using a body double. Now that he's back, I'm sure the guards who worked on his case back in the day are in for a headache, but however this turns out in the end, the one thing it won't be is boring. Couldn't agree more. As a journalist, I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of this one. Thank you, sir, for your time. Now, whom should I interview next? Oh, huh? Hey! What a coincidence! Fancy meeting you here! Perfect timing. So, the Phantom Weasel's latest warning letter. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this is the first time we're hearing of this one. Could you clue us in? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, this case is from a decade ago. I guess he wouldn't know about it. Well, not to worry. You're in good hands because I'm a professional. The story goes like this. Ten or so years ago, a phantom thief became active in the court of Fontaine. Known only as the Weasel, nobody knew his true identity, and the authorities never managed to catch him. Wow! Cool! He sounds like one of those mysterious night burglars that you read about in novels. Precisely. Well, except the part where they actually have a good reputation. Our Weasel targeted whatever people held dear, and no one was safe from his predations. He would just as soon steal a necklace from a rich merchant's safe as he would a toy doll given to a commoner child for their birthday. I know. The phantom thieves you read about in novels rob the rich to pay the poor, but this guy did not discriminate. Unsurprisingly, this didn't work wonders for his public reputation. Every man and his dog wanted to see him behind bars. Yeesh. So, uh, did they catch him? Um, not exactly. There's a good chance that the weasel would still be at large to this day if it hadn't been for an accident ten years ago. A magician named Caesar fell to his death in a botched high-altitude escape performance. When the police went through his personal effects, they found a hoard of stolen loot and gadgets used for criminal activities. And that was how the phantom weasel's identity was revealed to all. Sure enough, thefts and Fontaine went down after Caesar's death. But today, ten years on, the notorious thief has once again issued one of his warning letters and pasted it on the gate of the Opera Epicles for all to see. I had to squeeze through the crowd this morning to get a photo as soon as I heard. Here, it's this one. So, this is the warning letter, huh? Let's see what he wrote. Three days from now, when evening falls, I shall take from you that which you hold most dear at the Opera House, just as you did to me ten years ago. This is, without a doubt, a clear declaration of criminal intent. After years of laying low, the Phantom Weasel is back with a vengeance. What once seemed like an open and shut case has been blown wide open again. But why has he re-emerged now? And what does he want? I sense an epic scoop. And I'm going for it. Uh-oh. If this thief will steal anything that other people value, does that mean even we might be targeted? Really? Oh, let him try. In fact, I'm just gonna eat all our snacks right now. Let's see what he can do about that! Okay, the people have spoken. It's clear that the public are very concerned about the Phantom Weasel's reappearance. Let's see, I've got a photo of the letter, my interview notes. Yep, that should be enough to form the skeleton of my article. It does feel like something is missing, though. Something exclusive. Who should I interview next? I need someone with a more concrete connection to the weasel. Hmm. Is that who I think it is? Lenny! Magic. Magician. Caesar! <gasps> the 
Phantom Weasel! That's it! Let's go interview Lenny! You see, the original Phantom Thief Caesar was a magician too! And what do Phantom Thieves and Magicians have in common? They both have an air of mystery about them. Perhaps there's a connection there. Are you serious? What sort of a deduction is that? Oh, relax. My journalistic instinct tells me that an exclusive news story is beckoning. Let's go. No time for delay. Wow, Mr. Magician! How did you know which card I picked? Oh, it's simple. Come closer and I'll let you in on my secret. Magicians have a special skill called telepathy, which means we can read other people's minds. Really? Then, what am I thinking now? Well, first you need to relax, because I can see that you're clenching your fist in your mind, as if to say, no, I mustn't let him guess it. Aww. And now you're getting a little flustered. You're trying to find a way to empty your mind, to think of nothing at all. But the more you try to hide a secret, the easier it'll come out. You snuck out from home today, didn't you? You told your family a little lie so you could come out and play. Now, now, that's not a good habit. Y you can tell? Uh, oh boy, you really can read my mind. Of course. Oh, and that's the end of my performance. You should really be heading home. Remember to apologize to your family, all right? They must be worried about you. Uh, all right, got it. Bye, Mr. Magician! Why, hello. We meet again. Are you looking for me? What's the situation? Well, why don't you guess, Mr. Telepathic? Oh, please. You didn't believe that spiel, did you? The power of telepathy is quite beyond me. I'm sure that child would beg to differ. Seemed like you were right on the money. That was nothing more than a little trickery. I made an educated guess based on his micro-expressions. That, plus the fact that he was the only kid here without his parents, and he looked as guilty as sin. He made it easy for me. You guys, on the other hand... Hmm... Let me guess. Don't tell me you're here for the Phantom Weasel, are you? Wow! Got it in one! Is this more of your trickery at work? Wait, really? <laughs> no, no trickery this time. It was pure luck. His warning letter's been the talk of the town, so I figured that maybe you were asking around about that. Bingo! I plan on writing a column reporting on the latest news about the Phantom Weasel. So, Lenny, what are your thoughts on this infamous thief's reappearance? Hmm... To be honest... It makes me angry. Angry? Why? You read his letter, right? The Phantom Weasel claims he's planning something in three nights' time at the Opera House. That's the night I'll be performing there. Huh. What are the chances? <gasps> Wait a minute! You don't think he's after you, do you? Well, if he is, then his warning is clearly a direct challenge to me personally. And if he's not, then it's still going to be a huge headache for me. The mere mention of the weasel's name is enough to scare people off. So once the contents of that letter get out, barely anyone will be showing up to watch my show. But I've been preparing for this for a long time. I'm not about to let him ruin my big day. This leaves me with only one choice. I have to expose the Phantom Weasel's identity before the show begins. Really? 
So what you're saying is, we might get to see a live duel between a famous magician and an infamous thief? Wow, this has exclusive written all over it! To be honest, I'm not sure if I'll emerge the victor. The Phantom Weasel is a notorious crook, infamous for his inscrutable methods. You're being far too modest, Linny! I think your magic tricks are even more inscrutable than those of a thief! Thanks for the compliment, though I have to say, I don't care much for the comparison. A lot of people liken magicians to thieves because we both have the ability to make things disappear without the person noticing. But there's an important difference that these people overlook. Allow me to demonstrate with a quick magic trick. Here, I have a flower, just an ordinary flower that was picked not long ago. Watch it carefully now. Three, two, one. <gasps> it's gone! That's the question. Where did it go? Therein lies the difference between us. Thieves make precious things disappear, but only magicians make them reappear. If I could now invite you all to check your clothes, there might be a surprise in there somewhere. A surprise? Let me see! <gasps> it's right there! But how? You haven't moved this whole time! What an outstanding trick! Sorry, Linny, it seems that my previous praise was woefully inadequate. Clearly, magic is the superior art form to theft. Don't worry, I didn't take offense. I just wanted to take the opportunity to perhaps change some of the preconceived notions you might have about magicians. Since Caesar's death, a lot of people associate magicians with criminality. It can be quite frustrating. I can imagine. Um, coming back to your trick just now, might I presume that you are well versed in floral symbolism? For example, magicians often use rainbow roses in their flower-related performances to represent passion and romantic encounters. But you used a Lumidu spell, which, if I'm not mistaken, allude to separations. I'm curious to know if there was any deeper meaning behind this choice? Impressive knowledge. It's no wonder you're such a successful journalist. But I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about floral symbolism. I'm just in the habit of using Lumidu spells in my magic. It sounds like something I should look into, though. Hmm. I'll buy myself a copy of Fontaine's Floral Language Facts when I have some time. But it'll have to wait until this phantom weasel business is behind us. Well noted. In that case, this brings us to the end of our interview. I, for one, am looking forward to the final showdown between you and the thief. Please feel free to get in touch to update me on any further developments. Otherwise, I will of course see you at your show in three days' time. But let's hope the Phantom Weasel is caught by then. If there's nothing else, uh, I'll be off. You've given me lots to work with here, and I've got no time to lose if I want to write that exclusive piece. I'll see you all later! So, uh, Lenny, are you going to tell us how you did that flower trick now? <laughs> I'm afraid that's my little secret. Aww. Well, magicians are entitled to their secrets. But Paimon's really itching to know how it's done. You feel it too, right? So itchy. <laughs> Not so itchy then, huh? Well, since you're so concerned, how would you like to serve as my temporary magician's assistant and help me investigate? Magician's assistant? Oh, that sounds fun! Assistants are technically magicians too! Also, it'll bring us one step closer to figuring out how that darn trick is done! Shall we go for it? Excellent. Thank you for putting your trust in moi. The first thing we need to look into is who Caesar really was. If he truly was the Phantom Weasel, that means that the Weasel is dead, and whoever wrote this warning letter is just a copycat criminal. But if he wasn't the Weasel? Hmm. Well, that'll make things more interesting. 
It would mean that the weasel lives and he's been laying low all this time in some corner of Fontaine. And if we're investigating Caesar, his fiancée Gemma is a good place to start. Word is that she visits the cemetery often, so I asked Lynette to wait for her there. We should make a move. Let's go and rendezvous with Lynette. You took your time. Sorry. I bumped into the Traveler and Charlotte en route, and we ended up chatting for a while. It's been a while, Lynette! We're working as Lenny's temporary assistants in the investigation of the Phantom Weasel. Thank you. It's good to have you helping. So, what's the situation? Have you seen Gemma? Nope. I've been here a while, and she still hasn't shown up. How bizarre. Maybe it was bad intel. Well, we won't get anywhere by standing around waiting. Traveler, Paimon, let's go ask around. I'll wait for you here and see if Gemma shows up. Excuse me, good sir. Do you by any chance know a Gemma? Gemma? You mean Caesar's fiance? Sure I do. What's this about? I'm just trying to get a hold of her because I need her help with something. I heard she comes here a lot? Yeah, she does. <sighs> Poor thing. It's no secret why, either. She's heartsick. Ever since Caesar passed away, she's been coming here once every week to clean his grave. Often, she just sits there in front of his headstone, lost in thought. Sometimes she talks to herself. I asked her what she was doing once. She said she wanted to speak to him again. She knows he's gone and can't hear her from the grave, but she just likes to spend time there, telling her fiancé all about how her life is going. And she's been doing this ever since Caesar passed away? Oh, so ten years. Wow, their love must have been really strong. I'll bet. Caesar's reputation fell apart after his identity was revealed, so no one else visits his grave. Gemma's the only one who still thinks about him after all these years. I don't know if the mind lives on in the waters after death, but if it does, I'm sure Caesar must be grateful to have someone who remembers him fondly. If I'm honest, I think this is all so unfair to poor Gemma. Her fiancé was a low-life crook. He doesn't deserve someone like her. Anyway, all of that said, she's running later than usual today. Normally, she'd be sitting in front of his grave by now. I wonder if she's okay. Well, that's everything I know, I'm afraid. You might have more luck asking some other people. All right, well, thanks for sharing all of this with us. We'll keep asking around. You're welcome. <sighs> I just hope she'll be able to move on one day. Did you hear the news? They're saying the Phantom Weasel's back. You're kidding. Wait, isn't he dead? I don't know anymore. All sorts of news flying around nowadays. I can never tell what's true and what isn't. But what if, just hypothetically, I mean, what if this weasel's the real deal, and Caesar was framed? Called it. Seriously, ten years ago, on the day it all went down, I said to myself, you know what? This guy's been set up. 
The Caesar I knew was a good guy. He gave balloons to children on the street for Pete's sake. What, are we supposed to believe that he was a balloon thief or something? Give me a break. Oh, please. Weren't you the one cursing his name to high heaven when the police announced the news? You were all, oh, that gosh darn lousy son of a, oh, you think you know a guy, or words to that effect. Wait, did I say that? Hmm, I don't seem to recall. Hello there. Sorry for disturbing you, but I couldn't help but notice you were discussing the Phantom Weasel. We're actually quite interested in this topic as well, but we're struggling to get to the bottom of it. Do you think you could spare a moment to tell us a little bit about Caesar? You've come to the right people. Yep, I was there. Back when Caesar used to perform magic tricks on the street. He was a great magician. The best trick I ever saw him do was pop a transparent balloon, only for a whole bunch of doves to fly out from the inside. I was right up close and didn't blink or look away once, but for the life of me, I still don't have the faintest clue how he pulled it off. Really incredible stuff. I saw him perform too. He always used to bring some gifts along for the kids who came to watch his show, and he'd hand them out after he was done. Sometimes, he even got the kids to write their wishes down, and then he'd make the items on the wish list appear in his next show. Huh. He doesn't sound like such a bad guy. But after he died, there were also rumors that he used the wish list to find out what was precious to people, with the intent to steal it later. As I'm sure you know, the Phantom Weasel would steal just about anything from anyone. Whatever the case, now that the weasel is back, Caesar's become a hot topic once more. I bet Gemma must be pleased. If Caesar's name gets cleared, maybe it'll finally give her some solace after all this time. No, oh, speak of the devil. That's her over there. If you've got any more questions about Caesar, she's definitely the one to ask. So that's Gemma. Uh... Is it just Paimon, or does it look like something's wrong? Wait, it looks like she's injured. Come on, let's see if she's okay. Uh, hi there. You're Gemma, right? Who's asking? Don't be afraid, we mean no harm. It looks like you're injured. How bad is it? Thanks for your concern, but you didn't answer my question. Who are you, and what do you want with me? My name is Linny, and this is my sister Lynette. We're investigating the Phantom Weasel. The Weasel posted a warning letter this morning. If he still lives, that means that Caesar was falsely accused. You knew Caesar better than anyone else. So if you're willing, we'd love to hear what you think about all this. <sighs> I promise you can trust us. We won't hurt you. In fact, we'll do all we can to keep you safe. I... I never believed that he was the weasel. Huh. I suspected as much. Okay, so going back ten years, do you remember anything strange in the weeks leading up to the accident? Did Caesar have a falling out with anyone, for instance? No. Not that I know of. <laughs> Got it. All right. Sorry for disturbing you. <sighs> If you don't have any more questions, please leave. I want to be alone with him. Judging by the look on her face, there's definitely something fishy about her. She's lying. She definitely knows something. That's fair. We're just a bunch of strangers who showed up and started questioning her about things that happened a whole decade ago. It makes sense that she'd be wary around us. In any case, I doubt we'll get any further here, so let's call it a day. Meet me outside Hotel de Boer tomorrow, and then we'll start the next step of our plan.
up inside this box. Let's get this show on the road! And 
Now I'll make it all disappear.
And voila! Here comes the finale! Over here! Yeah. Over here. Lynette's not joining us today? I've had her follow Gemma and see if we can make any inroads with her. They should be at a cafe right now. Still, I don't think that Gemma's likely to open up to us. So, we need a contingency plan. Today, we'll be looking into a guy named Lorenzo, Caesar's former pupil and assistant. When Caesar passed away, all the stolen goods discovered in his home were confiscated and returned to their rightful owners. But Lorenzo was the only one privy to all his magic secrets, and he inherited his craft. Before long, Lorenzo was the next big magician in town, his fame surpassing even that of his master, and it made him very wealthy. He's since left the magic scene, though, and these days, he's a wealthy businessman with his fingers in a lot of different pies. I had to pull a lot of strings, but I managed to get him to agree to a couple of drinks with me. Be warned, though, I hear he's got a hair-triggered temper. We'd best be careful. You neglected to mention that you were bringing two other people with you. My apologies. These two are my assistants. When they heard that I was meeting with the former magic maestro himself, they begged and pleaded with me to bring them along. Um, and if it's no trouble, a couple of autographs would really make their day. Oh, forget the pleasantries. Just sit. Get a load of this guy. Forget the pleasantries, he says, but he looks pretty happy about Lenny stroking his ego. I only agreed to meet since we're both magicians. Do me a favor and cut to the chase. I have more important things to do than drinking. Much obliged, sir. As it happens, the matter I want to address is also related to magic. Yesterday morning, a warning letter from the Phantom Weasel appeared on the entrance to the Opera House. He claims to be planning something for the same evening that I'm scheduled to do a magic show there. As such, I believe that I may well be his target. I have to get to the bottom of this to ensure that my show can go ahead as planned. Naturally, any investigation into the Weasel starts with a few questions about Caesar, who... What is there to investigate? Caesar was the weasel, and he's been dead for ten years. So what if some sick creep thought it'd be funny to write a warning letter? It changes nothing. Are you trying to tell me you actually bought it? Please, sir, no need to get so worked up. I do concede that a copycat is but one possibility. Possibility? It's a fact, Linny. Look, my patience is limited, so listen carefully while I'm still willing to put up with you. The weasel is dead. Period. 
Everyone knows that, so do yourself a favor and quit this investigation. It'll lead you nowhere. Look, if this affects your magic show in any way, I will personally compensate you for any losses. Oh, sir, I'm honored, really. But this isn't about finances for me. My pride as a magician is what's at stake here, Lorenzo. Copycat or not, this person has thrown me the gauntlet, and I must meet their challenge head on. Your pride? <laughs> Don't mince words with me, boy. Just tell me what exactly are you seeking to do? I want to find out the Phantom Weasel's true identity. I have to know for myself what really happened ten years ago. What would that accomplish? And what do the events of ten years ago have to do with you, anyway? Look, you of all people should know that a magician never reveals their secrets. And in any case, dead men don't talk. So if you really care about your magician's pride, then you'll forget about Caesar and move on. Uh, uh. Uh-oh. This is getting awkward. Renzo? Is that? Oh, it is you! <laughs> I know that big, uh, booming voice anywhere. <laughs> What's up, my man? Wanna grab a drink with me? Another day, I'm busy. Aw, oh, come on! You can't be all business all the time. You know what they say! Live fast, die! Young. <gasps> You gotta learn how to kick back and relax once in a while. If I wanted your life advice, I'd ask for it. Now get out of my face and go be drunk somewhere else. Sorry, my good sir. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, hey! Um... Edmondo. He and I are business pals. We work together a bunch of times. This is your first time meeting him? Oh, he's always like this. Foul mouth and hard nose. Never heard a kind word out of this guy the whole time I've known him. Uh, and he wonders why he can't get a girlfriend, despite being, what, pushing 40, 30, something? Anyway, point is, a lot older than when he first got rejected by the girl he was into. And. He's still into, from what I hear. Shut up and get out of my face. Another word out of you and you can forget about doing business with me ever again. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> uh, sorry, I may have had a little too much to drink. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna leave. Don't work too hard. <laughs> I think it's high time I made a move as well. If you really want to investigate this, Linny, be my guest. But if nothing good comes of it, don't say I didn't warn you. Well, that fell to pieces in a rather spectacular fashion. Any thoughts? And now, like Gemma, she was a little suspicious, but this guy's definitely covering something up. I think so, too. We need to look into Lorenzo more closely. That guy Edmondo seems to know a thing or two about him. He only just left. Let's see if we can catch up with him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
You okay there? Uh, who are you? Oh, it's you guys. Don't worry about me. I must have had one too many. Uh, I just need to ride it out. <laughs> I say way too much back there, didn't I? Yeah, I nearly talked myself into complete financial ruin. <laughs> Note to self, no more drunken chats when Lorenzo's around. So, he was serious about threatening to cut you off? Ugh, Paimon knew he was a bad egg. Hey, 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 Just keep your voice down. Don't go prying into Lorenzo's personal affairs. <laughs> bad things happen to people who ask too many questions. Or make an enemy out of him. What kind of bad things? Don't even ask. I'm sorry, uh, I'm gonna have to cut this conversation short. I'm not crossing that line again. And take it from me, trouble with Lorenzo is one thing you don't need in your life. You some flare up back there. I don't know what you said to him, but clearly it touched a nerve. That's not a good sign. You're, you're too young for this. Don't get in over your head. I'm leaving. being watched. Someone was listening in to our whole conversation. Don't say anything and don't look back. Any altercation in the city will attract the guards. We'd better take this elsewhere. You followed us a long way. Why don't you come out and introduce yourselves? So you're Linny. And where's your sister? Ain't she with you today? Save us the trouble and go fetch her for us. Let's not drag this out. Hyman doesn't like the tone of your voice, mister! Who sent you, huh? Save your questions, missy. You ain't gonna need answers where you're going, capiche? <sighs> Looks like we can't avoid this fight. Now, I'm not the strongest fighter, so I hope you're ready to back me up. Don't worry, we got this! Tougher than we thought. Vision wielders are always trouble. Intimidation ain't gonna work like it did on the lady. Come on, let's scram! Hey, wise guys! We ain't through with you yet! Oh, they got away! <sighs> did you catch what they said just before they left? Something about intimidating someone else. Sounds like they just wanted to rough us up as a scare tactic, and they've already done it to someone else, but who? You're right. She was injured when we saw her yesterday, and she acted like she had something to hide. Maybe she was too scared to tell us the truth because those guys had threatened her. Hmm. 
Well, if that's the case, she should be more willing to open up to us when she learns that those thugs won't be bothering her anymore. Let's head back to the cafe and see if we can get any information from her. Again. What is it this time? We just ran into the men who've been threatening you, and we gave them a taste of their own medicine. So, you can relax now. We're here to protect you. What? Why? I didn't tell you anything. Why would they come after you? <laughs> Sounds like they're no strangers to you. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. I know them all too well and I hate them with every fiber of my being. It's been 10 long years, and still every time I try to look into Caesar's death, they show up and warn me not to do anything stupid. How do I know I can trust you? Do you really think you can get to the bottom of it all? And why are you doing this? I'm afraid I can't reveal all the details just yet, but I can promise you this. I will expose the Phantom Weasel's true identity. Because you see, this is a personal matter of the utmost importance. I give you my word. Trust me. Okay. How can I help you? I've heard that Caesar used to have a magic workshop where he kept a lot of his personal effects. If possible, I'd like to take a look at them. Do you know where it is? The Fluvesond. But the place was sealed up by the police after his death, and no one's been there since. I also know that the Fleuve Sandra is dangerous territory. Lots of hostile groups lurking around. If you're serious about going there, please be careful. Understood. Lynette, you stay here and take care of Gemma. Don't let her come to harm. <sighs> Got it. But if I'm staying here, I'm ordering dessert. I mean... Bon appetit, but stay sharp, too. They're likely to come for you while I'm away. Okay. All right. Power saving mode off. I'll start taking this more seriously now. Mm, looks like no more free classes for me. With me here, nothing will happen. 